Exit TV Right now officiating is I have been watching EPL when referees will come into a game of this magnitude of these rivals between Arsenal and Chelsea between Arsenal and Manchester United between Manchester United and Chelsea Chelsea and Manchester City or Tottenham and you will see that they made the decision that they're not going to award any penalty it has to be very compelling Transit TV, welcome back again to the studios. This is a new series. If you are a Manchester United fan, if you are a Chelsea fan, if you are a Manchester City fan, Tottenham fan, uh, gather here, Arsenal fan, gather here. Let's talk. That's the name of the show. Let's talk. What is new? Because football is soccer as we may call it in the United States here yeah, is an ever evolving sport teams change the game changes the rules change and a whole lot of time every season different things come teams teams you know try to improve their sport go again some draw form some improving forms you know it's always new every season or it's sometimes even every week so things change quickly in football uh, a popular quote by some one guy in those days that's widely used in the industry so let's talk and uh, yeah please keep it there with me as time goes on maybe next week i'll be able to bring in fans of different clubs represent their club but for a start let's start with us now meanwhile before we, we start don't forget to subscribe if you have not done so if you are new to this uh, channel please subscribe and like uh, please please let's get 50 likes on this video you guys can do it i trust you can do it just right now before you forget just go ahead and click the like button and subscribe if you have not done so yes is if you are loyal to this channel you know i'm an arsenal fan i don't hide that fact but uh, the reason why i was starting to start with us now is that fact and secondly because it's been so much going on around about us now in the internet space in the last one week or two weeks considering the game they had against the city a couple of days ago so yeah we'll start with us now next week will be chelsea you know we'll go to united manchester, manchester city tottenham and uh, you know in that order so if you are a Chelsea fan out there and you want to be after enjoying this one you want to be part of this show i would love to have max two people you know hit me in the comment section or go to our Insta uh, instagram handle or facebook transit tv dm me your contacts and uh, we'll get you on the channel for the next one next week so let's start with us now and I'm going to use the first few minutes to talk about the game against Manchester City. They build up to that game. Uh, we know Arsenal was missing uh, Odegaard, who is their captain. They signed Mikel Moreno. Mikel Moreno was injured in training. Has not played for Arsenal since he joined the club. Uh, Tomiyasu was injured as well. So they had some a, a few players injured, and a lot of people felt that. Arsenal was not going to get anything from that uh, match. A lot of Arsenal fans, including myself, we are because of the defensive uh, quality of the, of the club. We are saying, well, if, if we get a draw at this point in the season, that wouldn't be a bad idea. A lot of pundits, because last season there was talk that Arsenal went to Etihad and played for a draw. There was a lot of, a lot of uh, criticism against Atleta and the team, the way they approached it, the game that it was cowardly and you remember the Rodri comment as well so yeah it was so much built up into that one and uh, I've always said in this channel that Ateta is a coach that always learns from his mistake whether 
he, he insisted and the players insisted that they know what they went to it had to do they don't, they're not listening to the noises but i felt that yes that was why arsenal went there to, to be defensive and play on the counter but i believe that Ateta always you know is a coach that tries to improve and learn from his mistakes so i wasn't very sure how i think i was going to approach that one but i felt that they were going to approach that game differently so i yeah, it was so much. What the build up was a lot, and uh, Arsenal has been the team pushing City for the title in the last two seasons. So obviously, it's, it's a massive game. It's a big game in EPL, and yeah, it, it had to attract a lot of interest and talking points in it. And considering the, what I know about Ateta, his mindset and the play, the the way he has built this team, I knew that that Rodri's uh, comment last season was going to be at the back of Ateta. I remember the experience of Asna and the Aventoni and what happened after that. I think, uh, I'm trying to remember one other incident again the past few years. So, uh, they always, Ateta is, uh, I'd, I'd say he's a vintage coach. He, he doesn't forget those challenges. He takes them up. And if you are an Asna fan, and you've been following this club for at least 15 years or 20, you will understand that I think I haven't played for us now and captain the us now and being part of the team when the team was a radical it, it, the team that people used to refer to us now as a soft team a team that other teams used to bully teams like Stoke City Bolton Manchester United Manchester City Chelsea especially Mourinho Chelsea you know used to have a meal used to you know have a, a feast of Arsenal in terms of the physical attributes of the game and mixing it with Arsenal so you, you will understand that and again you are part of the team you are supporting the team when Arsenal you know making top four was a trophy for the club that was the, the ambition a lot of a few stars left the club because of that Norman Van Piersi claimed that that was the reason why he left Fabregas left and went back to Barcelona and came back to Chelsea and won trophies so these were the reasons why a lot of people and these are things that Arsenal fans have suffered over the years in the hands of you know Arsenal became a banter than in what people call that it was the banter era actually between 2000 and Eight, if I may say, or yeah, or ten to 2019, that came. That's like some solid 10, 11 years. He was as now he, he couldn't come out, you know, in the community of fans and brag that you're an Arsenal fan. He was, he was huge. So, so he, he, he can understand why that vintage mentality and when as Ateta arrived at the club one of the things that he said that first that we need to close the gap between Arsenal and Manchester City Liverpool and Manchester United and Chelsea and those gaps have to be changed have to be closed first he thought about the culture he thought about mentality that these are things that have to change if they want to achieve things that this club should be, should be challenging for top big trophies and how was that going to be done a change thought about change of culture connecting the fans again with the team with the club having a unified front i think i talked more about things outside football outside tactics than tactics and for me personally i don't know about you let me know what you think in this point i don't really know how that was what brought me into the project of Ateta. When he started talking about things like this, I knew that these things were the issues. And he cannot fix the performance on the, on the, on the field if he don't fix those issues we were talking about. And immediately I jumped on his, on his wagon. And I've been a supporter of Ateta since then. And what did Ateta do? Straight away, he said, working on the culture, we could see it. And this is this led to people like Ozil leaving the club. Aubameyang eventually, we the captain left. And so many other players, Mustafi, we lost a lot of players left us. In fact, it, in fact, I don't think there's any player that I've met in us now that is still in that squad right now. Let me try and remember, apart from Saka. Saka, I think Saka is the only player that was in this, in us now, when Ateta arrived. The rest are gone. And... Uh, he moved from culture and still working on the mentality. I remember that I'm talking about players 
that will be signed to us now be players who want to play for the club who feel privileged to wear those jerseys i remember when he made that statement a lot of fans were laughing and declaring him that what well, who wants to play for us now and be, like i keep saying let me know what you think this is my view i feel right now a lot of players want to play for us and the players that on that team are team players that feel privileged to play for the team let me know what you think in the comment section do you agree with me if not why do you think that comment that dream that goal said that that has not been is not a reality yet then we'll go to the the, the game actually on the game day surprisingly i thought i made some changes i thought ben white was dropped i didn't know he had an issue i thought as eventually said after the game that he was he wasn't fully fit but ben white that we know plays through any condition any situation but they dropped him but eventually he also came to the fray of the of the of the game and played in, after a lot of players could not continue of injuries when califiori came on the left side and uh, timber had to move to the right back position and that's how Asna, Asna set up the, the defense. Kai Havas came to the middle and Trussard played as a first nine. So this is how Asna set up. And I want to touch a little bit on that game. The way Asna has been playing recently, they are a little bit more conservative. And especially when they go away from home, a lot of the times they surrender possession early in the game, fill the game, and then take their game back. And this is how they started. Unfortunately, because they did go, and they had to come out to play. And they came out, got their equalizer, and went ahead. Then unfortunately, what happened happened. Trussard got, got sent off. I don't want to talk about the officiating. I don't want to go into that. He, he, a lot has been said already about it. By now, you would have made up your mind what was wrong and what was right for me there were so many wrong decisions in that game that could have gone differently but let's not go the only thing i want to touch about in officiating is i have been watching epl when referees will come into a game of this magnitude of these rivals between arsenal and chelsea between arsenal and manchester united between Manchester united and chelsea chelsea and manchester city or tottenham and you will see that they made a decision that they're not going to award any penalty it has to be very compelling for them to award it that they make up their mind that they're not going to give red cards it has to be compelling before they do it and those days we enjoyed the battles of Roy Keane and Patrick Vieira. I was watching over Pires the other day on the Obi Wan podcast. He said he misses those times when the rivalry games offered the fans something. There was substance to it. As against the present day football, that where rivals are laughing and hugging in the dressing room before a game. You, you lose a game to your rival, you're laughing and smiling as if you won a lottery. Roy Keane says the same thing as well. So these referees set the tone. I watched one clip the other day. Guy never, he was, in fact, he, he was for he, the thing that was left for him was to ask a fan to give him a cut last or something to cut, uh, bless his, bless his soul, raise his feet or, or about Pires. The other day I was watching uh, Patrick Vieira. He talked about how at Old Trafford he had to take Gary Neville. But that was in the overlap. That today you're not gonna have have a meal of our periods, and that's what it was. And that's not took the battle to to Manchester United, and actually won that game. And we know the other <laughs> of the pitch incident that happened eventually, and that was a game that Royal missed a penalty. They, you know that would have stopped the unbeaten run for Arsenal. So Arsenal went that that season unbeaten because of that. that the, 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 the tension on that game that day is not something you, should, you can you know you know you can take a whole day to analyze that game. So that's what uh, like I said. So these referees this time around, first of all, they're not consistent. Secondly, they don't they no longer want to encourage that rivalry mentality that we all as fans crave to see football is a win a winning business and center entertainment these are the things we want to see when we watch football so if when you begin to look into little little stuff it begins to be a plan that's why it's difficult for them to be consistent because now 
everybody is not saying, okay, if you don't do this, why do you do this? You know, so there are some things that you can talk to players about. There are things you can say, play on. It's not everything doesn't have to be microscopically, you know, looked at and, you know, you begin to spoil the fun of the game. So that's something I'll, I'll touch on the, on the referees. Yeah, there's, there's going to be rules and regulations, but please, let's enjoy the game. This is a, 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 a contact game. Because if you want to go by the letter of the law, you have to stay consistent all the way. That's all I want to say about that. So the main talking point for us now today is, I believe, I don't know about you, I've watched Moreo build, when he came to England, Alex Ferguson and Wenger were ruling the league. He came in and knew that the way this, the, the philosophy of these two teams, there was no way he's going to compete with them on it because he's already ahead. So for you to compete with them in their game, you have to build a team with the same philosophy and it's going to take time. So what did Mourinho do? Mourinho came with an entirely different philosophy. Went defensive, the popular packing the boss, and he beat Wenger to eat hands down, beat Ferguson and started winning trophies for Chelsea, won trophies for Chelsea. If you go to Spain, I saw a Diego Simone coming to Spain. You know that Barcelona and Real Madrid are way ahead of every other person in Spain. There is no way you can compete with them in the resources. In terms of flamboyant football, attacking football, you cannot. They have the resources, they have the talent, they have the squad. They buy all the best talents in the game. What did Simone do? Simone did exactly the same thing. Went with the had to beat mentality, built this team, eventually fought Real Madrid and Barcelona and won because that is not how they play. So he grew the team in that strength and was able to use it to win even in Europe. Now, I haven't talked about the Arsenal of the of the old soft flamboyant football tiki taka if you want to call it that they will play you to death they want to score the perfect goal but they didn't have the grit when the push comes to shove and never won nothing with it so i thought that comes in this is what i feel tried the arsenal way of course the first two years he turned there was no i know the first is what he won it FA Cup, and if you remember, that FA Cup was won off of Manchester City and Chelsea. And how did he win that trophy? He played defensive football, what you call negative football. He them on the counter, Aubameyang playing from the left side, pam pam, two passes in the net. That's how they won that. They started improving the titans, you know, implement his philosophy. A lot of people claim that that was copying Pep Guardiola. And that's what it looked like at that time. Data has continued to evolve, evolve this team. Now you can no longer say that this team is formed from the Guardiola mentality or philosophy. You cannot say that. So what I believe Data has done is to take from Guardiola, but the core of this Arsenal team is Diego Simone and Mourinho mentality. Going forward, this team can score goals when they decide to, when they play the lesser teams. But when they go to the rivals, if you remember, Mourinho never lost, tried to lose or win away to his rivals. If he can, if he can, if opportunity comes, they do. But he always used to go there, difficult to beat. But at home, he will try everything possible to beat you. And Mourinho didn't just win games with football, he won games with other teams. Anything within the law that is possible, antics, whatever, mind games, the players being aggressive, whatever it, it took, get the, get the three points, and that's how you won. That's how I feel. I think that has set up this team. Hard to win philosophy, make yourself as compact. If you are a member of this squad and want to continue to play, you have to enjoy defending as much as you. Enjoy attacking regardless of the position in that team. This is what it has implemented, and that is why it's difficult for Arsenal. Arsenal has now played 12 away games in 2024, and they have only considered five goals. That tells you the philosophy of this team. And they have scored over 32 goals. A lot of people think that they don't attack, they do, but they are very, very defensive minded. 
And that takes me to the mentality of the players as well. Arsenal has managed, Teta has managed to attract and sign players who are willing to go to war within the confines of the law, even going above it. All the players in Arsenal right now are no pushover, they're no longer those crybabies. Secondly, and thirdly, they're away from. It looks like there's a resolve in this team that nobody beats us at their back here. Then the biggest talking point of this of the makeup of this team right now. And I want you rivals there to tell me. Tell me the truth. Set piece. Are you rattled? Are you upset? Are you jealous? Or do you like that Arsenal? in the modern day football has turned set piece as an attacking as a goal scoring that day. Hassan has scored the most goal across Europe in the last two seasons in corner kicks. Defenders, goalkeepers now tremble when Hassan get a corner kick. It has now become an attacking tactic, a goal scoring tactic, a goal scoring philosophy, a goal scoring attribute of, of the team. As a rival fan, let me know, do you think your your club should improve, work on this, improve on this? And they're not just using this thing to score, they've also mastered the act of defending it. Of course, when they have considered, considered the less goals in the league, of course, just the, naturally you know that they don't consider from 10 pieces. So these are the things that Adeta has brought into this team. Asna has left the, the reputation of trying to gain to top four to now challenging for the league. This is the third season. Though this season is just started, you can't see the challenging this season. But so far, after five games, they are fought on the table. Having played three very tough away games, Manchester City, uh, Aston Villa, and uh, of course, uh, Brighton, and didn't lose any of those games. Won one of those games, drew two of them. That tells you that they are also going to challenge this. It means their season in a row. A lot of people are saying, yeah, that I'm never going to challenge it. But if you know where the club, the team is coming from, you will understand and appreciate that even challenging for the title, I'm not going to lie to you, in my life, at some point I gave up that Arsenal will never challenge. There was no solution in sight how they were going to do it. But so we are that is now people say Arsenal fans are challenging, uh, celebrating challenging. No, we're not celebrating it. We are appreciating the distance, the amount of work, the amount of, amount of work impact that has had on the team. Yes, now we are demanding him to win. But so far, I am proud of Ateta. I have been an Ateta in man, but I am now even more Ateta in because of this, what he has done for the club. Because of where, where he picked up this team from and where he has, where we have it right now. So you can, you can interpret it how you want it. You can make it look like, you can banter with it. But if every core and real Arsenal fan, knows exactly where this team was when Ateta came in and where the team is right now. Another talking point is <laughs> on the street language, mixing it. Ateta has now built a team that is not scared to mix it with anybody. You can no longer bully this team. If anything, this team will bully you. And this is what the team, this Arsenal team has been lacking. As a rival fan, again, I'm asking you, what do you think about this? Are you worried? Are you jealous? Do you appreciate it? Do you think it's the right way to go? What do you think about this aspect of Arsenal now that this team, yes, you can say they can do better in terms of discipline because two yellow cards already in five games is not good enough. But in terms of the physicality, for a player as big as Haaland, not being able to bully Arsenal players, for a player as big as Rod, not being able to bully Arsenal players, for a player as big as Kovacic, Akonji, all these players, after the game against Arsenal, they have been crying. 
even crying. Let me know. Our city rattled. Is Arsenal the new pain in the ass of Manchester City? Like I said, please try. I know that football is an emotional game, emotional sport. We all have emotion towards our clubs, including me. But well, this podcast, I'm trying my best to take as emotional as much as, as hard as possible as I can. Please also take that out. Let's talk. That's the name of this show. Let's talk. What how do you feel about this new Arsenal, this new side of Arsenal, being able to mix it, regardless of what the situation is, bullying teams even at their own backyard? Is this something that you like about you're looking at Arsenal? Is it something that is worrying you? Is it something that, that you are beginning to get worried about? Is it something that you want your own team to implement as well? Let me know. Because this is what we used to see in Premiership when Arsenal and Manchester United were rivals, when Liverpool and United were rivals, when Chelsea, Mourinho, we are winning trophies. Play, rivals never liked players, never liked themselves, especially as long as the season is on. When they have games, it's enemy versus enemies. We I win you, I die, I win you, or I die mentality. This is what Ateta has brought into this team, in my own opinion. So let me know what you, again, let me know what in the comment section about this one. Now, let's talk about Manchester City. The reason is because Arsenal is the team closest to challenging City in the last season, at, last, at least for the last two seasons. This season, uh, uh, we don't know yet because it's just five games into the season. But so far, it looks like Arsenal is the closest to City. And from the behavior of Manchester City, from the comment that City players have been making, and the body language of Pep Guardiola. Let me know. I feel that Manchester City are uncomfortable. They are not finding it funny with us now. They feel rattled. They look rattled. And they can see that the gap has been closed. Let me remind you, two seasons ago, four points were the difference. Last season, it was two points. Two seasons ago, Manchester City won us now home and away. Last season, Arsenal won their home and drew away at Etihad. This season, Arsenal has gone to Etihad. Flick of seconds missed winning. So the gap has been closed. Remember in the beginning, I told you, I told you one of his, the first thing is to close the gap between Arsenal and the top teams in England. The gap has been closed. And it looks like Ted Badula has realized that. He has been saying for the past two seasons, but people thought he was playing mind games. If you remember after that game, they asked him, he said, if I stuck, now if you say I'm playing mind, not playing mind games, this Arsenal team, I have always admired. And he said it two years ago, that Ateta will give Arsenal what they need. People say because he was he worked, he was his boy. So, let me know. Do you agree with me? Manchester City, are they, are they feeling threatened? Are they feeling that this dominance is coming to an end? Do you think that Manchester City will win the league this season? Considering what you have seen. And again, unfortunately, yeah, we wish him fast healing. Rodri, who is a key player for Manchester United, Manchester City, has done his ACL. And the last season, all the games that Manchester City lost, we are that Rodri was not in it. So if he doesn't play for the rest of the season, what do you, at least before January, Manchester City are not going to be able to sign any other player. Between now and January, the club will play like 10 to 15 Premiership games. Do you think that Manchester City are going to still win this league? And uh, after those comments, a lot of people think, like I said, this guy keeps improving. Three seasons ago, he was getting the local abuse suspended, having antis running to the pitch, he was accused of affecting the game in all kinds of way. Last season, he improved on it. This season, he he has totally you know, grown in that aspect, which I appreciate. He still tries to do his thing on the sidelines, but he doesn't get much involved confrontational with the officials. After games and interviews, he doesn't say much anymore, though you could read minutes into what he's saying. So let me know, as a rival fan, the questions are this. Is there a difference between the Arsenal that you knew 10, 15 years ago and the one that Teta has right now? 
do you think this brand has not is these attributes of being strong defensively, being hard to beat away from home, being able to mix it and winning games. Last season, Arsenal won a record 28 games for the club. Made 89 points, record points. Do you think that this Arsenal team has come to stay? As an Arsenal fan or as a rival fan, do you believe that this team has what it takes to win a trophy? What is, what is it about this team that you like and what do you think that this team needs to cross over the line? Let me know what in the comment section. I'll stop. This is the inaugural episode of this show. Like I said, we're going to be looking at every big club every week. Next week will be Chelsea. We're going to talk about Chelsea. We're going to talk about where, how far they have come. The new owners, the new uh, their module the new coach what they are doing right now what they probably will be able to do i probably will want to have a guest or two of chelsea fans if that's possible so if you are interested please dm me in the comment section send me your contacts or go to our facebook or instagram transit tv and let me know we'll select one or two people from there to be on this show so we'll stop this for now I believe, I firmly believe that Ateta will take us now to the glory land. They will win trophies, they will win the EPL, they will win Champions League. That's my belief. This team has everything it takes. Like I said in the beginning, this Arsenal team is a makeup of Mourinho and Diego Simone and a touch of Pep Guardiola. And these three managers are winners. So if you are able to incorporate their philosophy, their style, their coaching style, and everything into one team, I have no doubt that that team will win. And that team is Arsenal. And I'll see you again next week.